Welcome back, everybody, to Hot Mike Gaming. My name is Zach. My name is Phil. And we are your hosts today for Hot Mike Gaming, where last time we met back up, we were talking about Fallout, Fallout. the new series. We did like a full spoiler review, which was like really fun to do as like a first episode. It was a great time. Yeah. It was super great, yeah, especially so about one of our favorite franchises. Exactly. And now we're back talking controversies in gaming mm -hmm. and also letting you guys get a little bit more of an insight on who we are, who are me and Phil. And that's what today's episode's all about, is having that fun time. So with that said, let's roll that intro, man, and then jump right back into jump this. Jump right into it. We are back, Phil. So we are live in studio. And to really get this kind of the ball rolling on this, I want to ask you, you know, who are we? You know, yeah. some of the audience might know who I am because mm -hmm. I run a YouTube channel, all that stuff, but they might not know who my best friend is, and that is Phil. I've known Phil since seventh grade. Mm -hmm. The first day of seventh grade, this man wore a Halo ODS t-shirt to school. That's right. The first time we ever interacted with each other, it was a uh, just an ODST staring out into the rain, mm -hmm. right? And you told me you loved my shirt, and that's how we just became best friends. Literally. Friendships <laughs> over Halo ODST. It, it's kind of wild, like, because you go to school and you're a little nervous because it's a new experience, mm -hmm. junior high. A lot more kids are going into it. You don't know who's going to be your friend. In that first class, I remember I had no one from my elementary school. Mm -hmm. And the first kid I see is this kid with Halo ODST on his shirt. I'm like, that game was awesome. Hit him up. It was an easy conversation. I've always said that things like that, like movies and games, can easily segue you into a conversation with anyone mm. and that's kind of where we're at now so I, I love that and you know to kind of jump in a little bit to us how long have we been playing video games i've i've been playing since i remember my first console personally was the playstation one but mm -hmm. it was more my dad's and jumping in i remember the actual first set of games i started playing was like on the playstation 2 gauntlet dark legacy uh grand theft auto definitely should not have been playing that Ratchet and clank um the list goes on and on from there what about you what was like the first console you ever played so as far as like first console i think the big thing i remembered was being like three or four and my brother getting his copy of Metal Gear Solid mm. and playing on the PlayStation 1. I had no clue what he was doing. It was just some like espionage, some spy thriller thing, and it was super cool. And then I ended up getting babysat by like someone who was a big Diablo nerd. Ooh, okay. He had Diablo 2 on the computer, and I was like five years old, and I was playing Diablo on his computer. So Speaking I, of Diablo, that, that throws it back to me. I mean, I guess technically, yeah, Diablo and Diablo 2 were like a big part of my childhood too. Yeah. My dad set me up with a dinky little computer so I could play with him. And it was like right next to his desk. And I remember always playing Diablo with him. And the first game was really hard. And I just remembered like he would use me as bait to bait all the, <laughs> the enemies around. And then Diablo 2, I started to kind of get the hang of it and all that. And, uh, but the also like handheld wise was a big thing as kids. Cause like, if you oh, kind of yeah. play like Game Boy Color, like I had like four games I remember and I still have my Game Boy Color to this day and I have Pokemon Silver, which is like one of my favorite games of all time. What was the first handheld concert for you? It was definitely a Game Boy Color. Um, I remember I had really weird games. That's I okay. had like the, I had Elmo's I, big adventure. Dude, I had like a home alone game. Yeah. And then I had this like robot game where it was like a mini map. It was a maze and you just walk down kind of like those old, uh, yeah. Bethesda, like RPGs oh, okay. where you just like keep walking I love and that. turn yeah. and random encounters. Special man. It's special. Yeah. Well, to lay that out and to kind of like, I guess like if that's where you really started at first, I want to know, let's talk about our top three favorite video game franchises mm -hmm. of all time. Now I'm going to let you go first. What's your number one? My number one, it definitely has to be Resident Evil. I'm wow, a, okay. Yeah. Favorite one? Oof. I'm a big fan of two, mm -hmm. and I'm a big fan of four. Okay, fair enough. The two best ones, arguably. So yeah. I, I love it. Four, four is personally mine. I really like two. I didn't, I've never gotten the hype for it. Like, I understand how cool mm. it is, but, like, maybe it's just because I'm a scaredy cat. I think and it that was, game is uh, terrifying. When I first had my experience with it, I was little. Mm -hmm. I was watching my brother play. Um. And they have like a whole 
usually old games when they do cutscenes, it's very like rare and it's like in engine it's like whatever right but they showed off the the liquor in resident mm. evil 2 and that was my first yeah time the liquor's it. cool and I when leon like, runs into it right yeah, yeah. When leon runs into it and it's like on the ceiling mm-hmm. and you see it slithering around i'm like dude it scared me but it like in a good way and i, I, I just I fell in love with it i love that uh second favorite franchise then Ooh, i would have to be i'm stuck between i guess i would have to go with bioshock bioshock okay yeah. okay favorite are you gonna say two is your favorite one because the online yeah okay well, so no not the online just like the story okay, in so general preface this oh n- never mind i mean there's no prefaces you, you just think bioshock 2 is the best one yeah i think you're insane really like, I, I think you're fucking insane like i like two I've never had the urge to go back and play it. Oh, it's, I thought it was so easy. It, it's fun. I really mm-hmm. liked it, but Bioshock One and Bioshock Infinite are like, for me, just like that all around experience and rapture. And uh, what was the city in the oh, sky? Uh, I don't know. I forgot. Yeah, something Sky City. I don't fucking yeah. know. <laughs> but but that experience like changed my life. Um, two was cool because he could play as a big daddy the whole game. Yeah. I think I loved too because it was uh, you got to see and have like that really protective narrative of being mm-hmm. a big daddy, and you get to be the things I like protect and make the world, the small world of Rapture go around. Mm-hmm. That's what makes it. I tight. also like that they added the big sisters. How they were called? Yeah, the big. The sisters. big sister was cool, and the online. I mean, that was very underrated. Like I know you were hooked <laughs> on it, but I was too. Like it ran very well. It was mm-hmm. awesome. I would love for some sort of revitalization of that to yeah, come Yeah, I think it would definitely be fun to play it again. Yeah. And especially with like the 360 servers being back up and all that. I'm just curious on like what, because the, there's rumors on like, oh, they're making a new Bioshock game. They're making a new Bioshock game. You know, what is it? it it's rumored not to be Rapture. It's rumored to be like in Alaska or some shit like that. So I'm very curious. I'm also very mm-hmm. nervous. Maybe Judas. Ken Levine's new game coming out this year is also going to be oh, yeah. that Bioshock game we all want. Yeah. Um, very excited. Third favorite franchise now. It would be Halo. It okay. Be and Halo. favorite one, Reach? Uh, it's definitely a tie between Reach and ODST. Okay. I think just Reach was like the pinnacle of what Halo is meant to be. Mm-hmm. And you finally get to experience like the the big narrative point of like the fall of reach, like the losing all the Spartans, how it affected humankind and all that. And it was just like, that was like the peak. Yeah, man. I mean, halo is incredible. I, I really like halo. I I've loved mm, half of them. Uh, two. I love two is the first one I ever played. And that's like my nostalgic bit for it. Halo ODST, Halo 3, awesome. Reach, I mean, nostalgia with you, playing mm-hmm. with you on um, Forge and all that stuff. And um, 4, it's grown on me a little bit. I don't hate 4. It's, yeah, I it's not bad. I despise 5, though. I yeah. fucking hated 5. And I really liked Infinite. I thought Infinite's story was great. I thought the online was pretty well done. I just didn't like the uh, how you progress. Like, it took too long. I know they mm-hmm. fixed it a lot. You can go back and play it now. It's a little bit better, but... It just, you lose that progression. Like everyone was trying to go to that battle pass and Microsoft was trying every little thing. They tried gears and they fucked gears at first and then they fixed it. And yeah. then Halo Infinite's kind of the same thing. Like it was very weak at the front and then now it's good. Mm. Don't do that at first. Do the good part first. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like uh, a lot of these AAA companies struggle with live service models mm-hmm. for their games and like what. And they're not ready for support. I think that's like yeah. a big thing. Yeah, it's um, not ready for support. I think it's almost like too much on their plate. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're still in this age of like having these yearly releases, right? Call but of Duty is a big one for that. I feel mm-hmm. like a lot of life service games that are successful in these days and ages are ones that aren't being yeah. renewed every year. They're being kept up. Yeah. So would you say that these three franchises for you are like the reason that you love games are because yeah. of these three. I'm surprised you didn't say fallout personally. Uh, was it, it close? Is, like number four, I think like, especially after last week's episode, I wanted to throw in something else in there and fair enough. 
share like a much more yeah. variety. Yeah. Now it's interesting because I was trying to figure out my franchises. I had two like locked no matter what. Mm-hmm. Now, some people might be surprised if they followed me for a while that like, I'm just going to get it out that The Last of Us is not one of my favorite franchises. Ooh. But I say that because there's only two games. Yeah. When a third one is eventually <laughs> released, because yeah. we all know it's going to happen, and it's great, then I'll feel a little bit better. I, I feel like it's hard to say, oh, yeah, like, the, two games is a franchise. Technically, it is. But like for me, I need more than at least three. I need three or more, personally. So... My number one favorite franchise of all time is is uh, Gears of War. Gears of War, like for me, like no matter what the game is, I think it's also one of the most consistent franchises. I think they've only made one okay game, and it wasn't even from the original developers. It was a uh, Gears of War Judgment Day. <coughs> the people can fly. That's the one that I did not think was great. I've never gone back and played it. I never played Judgment Day. It was very boring. Yeah. It, it's okay. <laughs> it has cool ideas, but I didn't fully love that one. Second, uh, again, some people will argue, oh, well, the new games aren't that great. They're still good. They still run great. They're graphically some of the best stuff that the Xbox has done. And while the characters maybe aren't the best, I thought Gears of War 5 was excellent. I was very surprised by Mm -hmm. the story choices that they did. And making Kate Diaz, the main character, the best choice they could have done for that new trilogy. Yeah, I was going to say, I I played through 5. Five felt pretty good, especially yeah. just being... Four was like a nice, we're back. Yeah. But it wasn't like the same gravitas as like the first Gears of War where you play it. And it's so... <laughs> wow. Adding on to that, um, so Gears of War is my number one favorite franchise of all yeah. time. I have two Lancers at home. Like, I'm so addicted to it. I, I saw some guy on Facebook Marketplace had the original GameStop standees that they had when Ooh. the games were coming out. I almost bought them. I had no idea where I'd put them though. I was like, oh, maybe I could bring them to like the podcast set, but like, yeah, as you can see, you can't really see Storm anything yet if you're watching the video. You... Over like this. Uh, it Storm was like him, him, Dom, and Carmine, and it was like Years of War in them standing up for oh, the first okay. game. Yeah. All right. Second favorite gaming franchise, Mass Effect. Um, four games in, a fifth one is announced. Andromeda is not great. Um, it's okay. Mm-hmm. I've played it through twice. The first time I did not beat it, I was just bored. The second time was years later after the Legendary Edition came out. I was like, all right, I got I got to try Andromeda. Yeah. The combat, best of the franchise. The story, the weakest of the franchise, hands yeah. down. Um, a lot of the choices just, it feels like they were trying to do so much in the first game where it's like what they really should have done, and I know they were trying to build up a new trilogy, yeah. was start smaller like the first Mass Effect was and grow from there. I just, it never grabbed onto me. I thought the characters were really lackluster. And I think they, I know they were trying to go away from the trilogy because, you know, when you beat the third game, I don't, did you ever beat it? Do you really? I was about to say, um, I just last night bought the uh, legendary Legendary. edition. It was like $5. I never touched a Mass Effect game. Okay. So I'll tell you in a second. Remind me in a little bit to talk about it just in a second. Okay. Once I get all my franchises out, but. The first game when I played it, I thought it was okay. I didn't mm. love it. And still to this day, I think it's just okay. Like the story, the character choices, awesome. Combat, awful. The vehicle, awful. The Legendary Edition fixed some of it, but yeah, still doesn't cut it. Th- that was the one that I could tell, yeah, you, you phoned that one in for the remaster. Like yeah. they definitely should have taken the combat from two and three and moved it forward. They didn't, that's okay, it's whatever. But that was the first time I had actually gone through and beaten it. Up to that point, I'd never beaten it. I oh, just wow. never cared. I just went straight to two all the time. I went to straight to two every single time. I would just replay it three times. Um, I'll tell you why in a second. But <laughs> then I got two. I remember when the second one came out, I didn't buy it first day. I was like, oh, it looks cool. But then there was all these reviews. It's like 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. And I went and bought the game like for $15 at GameStop. And I fucking loved it. I loved Mass Effect 2. And I loved it so much because it was the first game that made me feel, wow, my choices are vital. And I say that because uh, I killed off every single character in my first playthrough. <laughs> uh, very, very badly. Uh, to the point where I was really, 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 really sad. Um, and I instantly loaded my save, went through it again because I had to save everyone. Killed mm. it, uh, lost five people the next playthrough. 
my third playthrough, I finally did it. Yeah. <laughs> then Mass Effect 3 came out, bought it first day, beat it in a week. And I was one of the few that was like, not that disappointed by the ending. The ending's very, there's like four different endings. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to get into spoilers because you just bought them. And I don't want to spoil that because I think it'd be a cool segment to talk about your experience with Mass Effect. Mm -hmm. But it's open-ended. Like two of them are pretty open-ended. And I really hope the next one continues. Like they choose an ending. They're like, that is the definitive ending. Yeah. Because there's a couple that's like, oh yeah, that's cool to do. That's cool to do. But there's two that are very definitive to me. Mm -hmm. And I hope that's where five takes place. Is that it's the next trilogy for this and these characters. Gotcha. Adding in there, though, my third favorite franchise of all time. This was tough um, because I could have easily done Pokemon. I could have easily done Halo. Um, But in the end of the day, I went Kingdom Hearts. I have it was between Kingdom Hearts and Fallout for me. But is what Kingdom Hearts has done while I do not love every game. I actually really dislike 15 of those games now, right? I think there's nine. Nine. I think there's nine and three (laughs) main ones. And okay. then they're making a fourth one right now, which is rumored to be coming out next year. I hope that's true. Really? Yeah. Um, but I've loved Kingdom Hearts my entire life. The first game, I remember I played the second one first, fell in love with it, had to go back and play them all. And it was kind of like my introduction to not just Kingdom Hearts, but also Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. I love the characters that show up in there, and it really opened my eyes to how much I love Square Enix now. So without Kingdom Hearts, I wouldn't like, uh, probably would have never gotten into Square Enix and Final Fantasy games. So. Okay. It's a big part. Before we move forward, though, you got the Legendary Edition, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. I am so excited to hear your playthrough. It's very tough. <laughs> yeah. Um, to keep everyone alive. Um, it's gonna, easier once you play them back to back. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I tried. I th- I forgot which one I tried. I rented a copy. It might have been a Mass Effect 2. Probably was. Um, I didn't like the way how the combat was at the start. I think it was like you pick a class and you're stuck with that one nope, weapon that's type. One. That was one. Yeah, I was stuck with like a shotgun for like the entirety yeah. of the game, and I was like, "Wow, that's this definitely sucks. yeah." You played <laughs> one, two, nah. You can use any weapon, any class. It's very open. Then three opens that's it good. up even more. So yeah, I heard in Legendary Edition they kind of ditched that system in the first one. Mm-hmm. So I that was the whatever. one thing. That was the one thing they definitely changed a lot of. But one's cool. Just. If you, if you want help, I have a whole guide that I follow uh-huh. every time I play it to just make sure that I can at Dude, least keep everyone alive. Is it one of those old, like, book No, guides? no, no, no. It's oh, just on okay. Google. I just, go, it's like a, a link I go to, and it literally tells you, when you get to this mission, make sure to do this, mm-hmm. this, and this. Because it's, I mean, it's always cool. I've played the game so many times, though, at this yeah. point, that, like, for you, go in with an open experience. But if you want to go back through and play it and keep everyone alive, just let me know. Yeah. So, fair. All right, but... Before we get to the main topic of controversy of gaming, I, I, I always want to kind of touch on uh, in every episode, what are we playing right now? Because there's, while there's not a ton of video games coming out right now, mm-hmm. there is a lot of games that have come out and maybe some things that we're replaying right now. So, Phil, wh- what have you been playing lately? Oh, man, it's been a, uh, it's been a fun journey for me. Um, you'll see later on, I've been playing a lot of Tarkov this year. I've been playing a lot of Helldivers this year some dark tide Mm -hmm. and i've also been playing oh geez what was the single player game i've been playing a lot of the metro stuff again which one just all of them or yeah just all of them because the redux re um revitalizes a lot of the combat yeah i like those metro games yeah yeah what was the last one that came out last light exodus oh exodus that one was excellent i I liked them all but like last light was phenomenal yeah. yeah Uh, for me, um, the last time we talked, I, I beat Final Fantasy finally. Mm-hmm. Uh, 10 out of 10. Love that game. It's honestly like it gives God of War, Valhalla, uh, no, not Valhalla, Ragnarok, a run for its money for my favorite PlayStation 5 game right now. Oh, really? Yeah, I absolutely loved it. And I loved Spider Man as well. Spider Man lovers out there. I loved Spider Man too. Uh, I thought it was incredible. Mm-hmm. That came out this year, right? No, it came out last year. Okay. But uh, I loved it. As for that, uh, what else I've been playing? Uh, Fallout. I've just been playing like literally every Fallout oh, yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, I redownloaded every single one in every console that's in every room, so I can like play a Fallout game whenever I'm just sitting mm-hmm. there. So 
New Vegas, I have like a playthrough in the living room. I j- jumped back on 76. I got I got bored. Yeah. So then 4's next gen update came out and I've just been playing that. I've never done most of the DLCs for it. Mm-hmm. So it's been pretty cool. I just finished the uh, Automaton one. Oh, nice. Which I had fun with it. I'm noticing though for Fallout 4 why I platinumed it the first time I ever played it. Mm-hmm. And then never went back to it. There's a lot I missed in that game. Yeah. It's actually really big. And I think a lot of it was because I was so, like, I beat the story and then I was like, okay, I just, I want to platinum this thing. Mm-hmm. And that's all I did. And then probably something else came out. Yeah. But I'm really enjoying my experience with Fallout 4. I was going to say, uh, I completely forgot about Fallout. Yeah. I've been, uh, my friend got Fallout 76. Mm-hmm. And since I have like a thousand hours clocked into yeah. it, I just kind of come in and help him out with whatever. And yeah. Do whatever. And then right? hop out. Yeah. What I level is your character? My character is like level 750 something. Jesus Christ. So I, it's, it's 76 is better. Like I'll give credit. Yeah. Where credit it definitely, doing. it takes a while for it to grow mm-hmm. on you. Um, it's one of those games though that I feel like if you don't have someone to play with, it's not as fun. That's yeah, kind of what I've made the vibe of. A lot of my hours were clocked in just kind of sitting around and mm-hmm. trading with other people for Which like is gear. like a huge thing. Like the community yeah. the community I think was a big piece of the game. So yeah. I like it. Uh other than Fallout, I started Super Mario Wonder with oh, my wife the other cool. day. She wanted to play a Switch game and I was like, I've never opened this. I still have it sitting on the shelf. So I put it in and it's really cool. It, huh. It's cool. I'm having fun with it. Uh, oh, I also started Castle Crashers again on my Switch. Oh, I love that. That's a class because they added a uh, Alien Hominoid into yeah. the Switch, uh, into the Nintendo Switch online store. So I bought that and I was like, huh, now I want to play like Castle Crashers. So yeah, that's what we've been playing. That's cute. With that said, let's jump into the main topic. Phil. I know the controversies of gaming. So there's always controversies every single day, but the three that we really want to focus on is Star Wars Outlaws which is a game that I'm very excited for mm. until this fucking thing, the battle <laughs> pass escape from Tarkov, which I don't know a lot about. I just see the bitching. So you're yeah. going to have to be the one that talks yeah. about that microtransactions in games that maybe don't need it. That's mm-hmm. another thing. And then the end it all off is uh, the big thing that uh hell divers two started yep. doing, which as of right now, as of this recording, Sony did backtrack. So yep. we'll, we'll definitely talk about that, but let's go each one. Because I, I, what I like about these controversies is each one stems from something else. One deals with single player. One deals with live action, or mm-hmm. live action, uh, live uh, live service, service. games. Uh, the microtransactions really kind of play a part in all these. And then same thing with Hell Divers is kind of something else mm-hmm. for like businesses and what they're trying to do and to get into the game, the PC gaming. So yeah, let's start with Star Wars Outlaws. So correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Okay. Star Wars Outlaws is having an issue. Well, the controversy is when the game comes out, there's going to be a battle pass. The battle pass, I think I saw something about day one DLC. Yep. Job of the Hut. Yeah. That mission. And I saw that like to play three days early, you have to pay, I think it was $110. Yep. yep. And that, that one was big. Like I think about that and I think about the time when we would go out and pre-order Call of Duty World at War and we got in like a beta three yeah. days early or something before. To level game. up and stuff yeah. like that, yeah. And it's just, it's crazy to me that like, they wouldn't obviously monetize this if it didn't make a lot of money. Yeah, because it's Star Wars. It is. But what frustrates me is, because this is Ubisoft, right? This is Yeah. You, okay, so EA is the one that's been making Star Wars games forever uh for the last decade basically yeah Uh, they did two battlefront games the first one eh. the second one very eh at the start but now it's a great game yeah it just sucks because they murdered it with microtransactions yeah and then they made the rogue squadron game which i don't remember what was called just star wars squadron or something yeah that was actually pretty decent really good i think it's a vr game too you can play a vr yeah and then uh titanfall creators respawn did fallen jedi which was great no microtransactions nothing very just story based and it did phenomenal yeah and i have to give ea credit the sequel comes out and while definitely the sequel should have waited to come out they should have pushed it back a couple months when the game was all fixed it was excellent um 
And I'm not just saying that because they sent me it early. I don't want any fucking people out there saying, oh, well, didn't you, didn't EA send you it early when it came out? Yes, they sent me it like three days early. <laughs> I still would have bought it anyways. Like, And if they send us uh, Star Wars Outlaws early, I'll still be straightforward with it. I said I could not, as much as I loved my experience with uh, the new Star Wars game that they made, I did not think it ran that well. No. Going back now, because I I'd beaten it after all the before all the thing the updates had come out. Before I put out my review, I went back and played it. And I was like, okay, now now it kind of works. But Star Wars Outlaws, why the fuck does a single player game need to have microtransactions? Why the fuck does a single player game need to have a battle pass? That I think that's the thing that pisses me off more. Like microtransactions, yeah. sure, whatever. Buy this, buy that. Sure, buy DLC. Why is there a battle pass in a single player game? Straight single player game. Like there's yeah. not like, Phil, you can't join me in the game and run around on my crew. Mm -hmm. It's straight single player. No sense to me. Now, if they announce, oh, you and your friend, like Far Cry. Yeah. Okay, fine. But as of right now, it's only single player. And that's all they've talked about. Yeah, that is to me, it's just a, it's a triple A concern in this gaming industry mm -hmm. just i mean we've seen it outside of star wars look at assassin's creed valhalla uh, um, yeah. a lot of the ea games too have just been oozing with the opportunity of multiple season passes well and i guess ubisoft too right yeah. yeah and it's it's a shame because obviously it makes a lot of money so they do it because it makes some money but it's so different than how we grew up playing video games where our biggest issues was if we got like a map pack, right? It was yeah. like 10 bucks. We would were get it. 10 bucks? I feel yeah. like they were way more than that. Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare. Like oh, well, I guess if you bought the season like, pass up front, it was like 60 yeah. bucks. So, and okay. then uh, yeah. the big season pass, I think the first season pass I ever remembered was for Battlefield 3, and they mm. announced it at E3. I never bought that. And um, it was 50 bucks. You get all five DLCs, and they were good on their money. It was a great game. Well, and that's, I, I miss the days of battle packs or like map packs where mm. you bought them or a season pass. I miss those days because you were guaranteed to get that shit. Yeah. You were guaranteed to get support. Like you knew every three to four months, Call of Duty Battlefield, they're going to add at least four, five new maps and a zombies map. And every time I bought it, Battlefield, same thing. You get new maps, new weapons too, right? Mm -hmm. All that stuff. I miss the days of games having those. And like Star Wars Outlaws for me, it's like, just put it as, like it, it, back in the day, it was just DLC. You mm -hmm. bought it because you wanted to keep playing the game. It's, uh, it's definitely confusing to me. I understand that like games cost a lot of money now to make, especially with mm -hmm. how they do their production and everything. But it feels like a lot of these live service games, if they don't make money straight out the gate, they'll very quickly just discontinue Suicide service. Squad. Which and, that's the one I'm waiting to see what they do. Yeah. Which but, <sighs> Suicide Squad. I feel bad for those people. I'm so sorry out there. Forever owns that. I own the game. I <laughs> I put a lot of time in it though. I got my money's worth. I just didn't buy the add on. I, yeah. I put at least forty hours in that game. I really liked it for what I played. I uh -huh. thought it was fun. I liked playing with some of my friends who had it. I liked just joining online and I, I liked the grind at first. Mm -hmm. I just hated what they did with the Joker thing. You had to play like you either bought it or you had to play pay another ten or uh, pay like uh, three hours more to mm -hmm. actually play as Joker. Oh wow. So I, I didn't want to spend the money. And I don't care to play as that version of the Joker. Yeah. When Destro comes in, oh yeah, maybe. I'm just curious to see what the support is on that game now. And also the support they did was like, it was cheap. It was something they could easily lazily, oops, sorry guys. They could easily lazily throw back in. Yeah. So Outlaws, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe every six months is a battle pass that just gives you more stories. And they're just titling it as a battle pass because that's what it is. Yeah. But time will tell. Is it like a generic one where like, yeah, if you do all this stuff, you get this costume and this skin. Or is it going to be like, oh, yes, for this nine months, you're going to have this story to talk about and play through. That actually might sell me. Mm -hmm. 
but it all depends because that's what I thought. Like Suicide much more of a narrative. Exactly. That's what I thought Suicide Squad was going to do because that's how they were piecing it, and it's definitely not that. And I don't know if that was because of all the issues that happened with it just failing. Or is that, no, that's really what we are going to do. It just all depends on how they're going to sell the game. Again, yeah. I'm playing devil's advocate. Maybe Ubisoft does have something in mind that like, no, like when we say a season pass, like it's actually going to be like a full year of content, like new story modes, new story DLC, new things. That would intrigue me. You know what that uh, reminds me of is uh, there was an old sci-fi show that was supposed to like come out years ago and be popular. Uh you probably played the game Defiance. Yeah, I have it. Yeah, it doesn't Defiance work. was <laughs> it's awesome. I really like the game, and I like the show. But that was like the kind of the bit the model, though, right? Yeah, like you play the game. Mm -hmm. They as the year goes on, they release new story content, and then they'll relay that to the show, yep. and then what happens in the show goes back into yeah. the game, and it's like this reverse. And it was a cool thing. And again, yeah. Outlaws could do that. I I don't remember what time period. I think it's taking place during the the original trilogy, mm -hmm. but like. That's cool to me. Like, it, again, it all depends on how they handle yeah, it. I'm playing devil's advocate, but I don't have faith unfortunately, in Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, I don't have much faith into Ubisoft in general. No. Especially, like, with the, the game way how... The does look cool. Yeah. Though. And I will say, I do know someone who's played it. Very good. Like, again, could be a watchdog situation where, like, what they played was, like, just a small snippet Something and then different. they, like, pull it yeah. all back. But... I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. I really like the creators who are doing it. But you got to sell me. I, I'm not buying your special edition, though. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I'll be able to actually buy any of their games. Hmm. Probably maybe when it's, like, super cheap for, yeah. like, 10 bucks. Or prove us wrong and send us a free copy. Yeah. I would love a free copy of a video game. Yeah. That'd be cool. And we'll give it a review. Mm -hmm. Early. Maybe three days early. <laughs> three days early. <laughs> That's usually when for they, fifty bucks. Yeah. If you yeah. pay us fifty bucks, we'll tell you. No, nah, I'd just do it for free if they gave me a free game. Oh. Because I'll be honest. What if the game sucks? I mean. Yeah. Then I'm honest. So, okay, jumping from that, let's start. Uh, Escape from Tarkov. Explain to me why everyone's up in their britches, pissed off about this game. Okay, so we have a game that's been in development since 2016, yeah. or at least been access to the public if mm -hmm. you bought the what is called the eod edition it's called the edge of darkness mm -hmm. think of like your old standard like uh call of duty model you pay it was 150 bucks yep you're supposed to get everything so the what was supposed to be the dlc anything that's released after it uh you get a few upgrades and things in the game it is pay to win in some of those aspects of yeah. like a special container where you could fit more things in and your overall stash is bigger. And that was kind of bit the incentive to get you in. Yeah. You get a special little name brand, all that stuff. All that cool stuff. Yeah. So what they ended up doing is that was supposed to be the pinnacle. Okay. So they pulled that away. It was pretty much marketed as like, get it while you can. Eventually it's going to go away. Yeah. They've been doing that for seven years now. And now that they finally pulled it away, they released a new edition for a game that's not finished yet, mind you. It's still an open beta for the past six, seven years now. Yeah. For a hundred dollars more and like two fifty, right? Yeah, yeah. two hundred and fifty dollars. And you get kinda like pretty much the the gameplay stuff. You yeah. get like started off boosted stats on your character because uh -huh. it is like an rpg you, you have skills that you could grind out and yeah. stuff like that so every skill is like higher level you get a bigger stash than the eod owners you get a special little Do you name feel thing fucked by this oh yeah it's terrible so can you buy it for cheaper uh originally they it was a hundred dollar upgrade for me okay and then because of the backlash recently, they released it, re-released it down to fifty dollars for just you for EOD owners. Yes. Okay. So what if I want to buy it? How much? Is I it? think it is still two hundred and fifty. That's a fucking joke. Can I just buy the game without paying for that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the standard copy. I think they raised price. So why do you think uh, they did this? It's obviously just to make more money. Um, and this, then with it, I was gonna also ask you: Does this like uh, for Escape from Tarkov? Is it like a pay to win with this stuff? Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that you got in there, if you guys don't know what Tarkov is, it's an extraction shooter. So think of 
Call of Duty's DMZ mode mm-hmm. um, or Division. I guess division. that's a, yeah, division. Yeah, in like the what is it, the rogue, yeah, rogue yeah. area. Pretty much anything that you bring with you, if you die with it, it's just gone. Yeah, and you go into these matches. They're called raids. They last fifty minutes. You do quests unless you die. Up. Yep, unless you die, and you could die in like the first twenty seconds. Like it's yeah. that fast. And uh, you do these quests. You level up traders. Super realistic and super realistic. A lot of the guns. The this game is pretty much cornered like realism in the aspect that I can build a M4 in that game and go out to like a shields or go to a gun store and do a one to one like build of it. Like I did it with my brother's AR, which is so cool. Yeah, like it's my, so interesting how like realistic that game is. Mm-hmm. So, so it's definitely cornered the market on that, and I feel like they just got super comfortable. And this is a game that's had a major controversy for anyone who's been a part of it about cheaters. Mm-hmm. And there was a big video that got like millions of views about pretty much like cheating in Tarkov, and. That is issue, just hackers or like yeah, so it's like people walling and they'll go in the map and they can like vacuum the map, so they'll spawn in and they'll suck all the loot up and then they'll just leave and then they'll sell it to someone mm. for like real money trading, huh. and, and they're uh, just not doing anything. No, no, I mean they obviously have their band waves, but their last band wave was thirty thousand cheaters. Damn. Okay. So it's so does this make you not want to play the game anymore? I know you put a lot of hours into it. Yeah, so. I'm currently clocking in like 3,500 hours in the game. I have pretty close, like, that was all the time that it counts. I probably have yeah. like 4.5 thousand hours. And it's definitely disheartening. I definitely stopped, like, what is this wipe, the current progression. Mm-hmm. It usually, every six months, they restart you kind of deal so you haven't really played this yeah i haven't been playing ever since it really happened which i don't blame you do they have uh microtransactions in general no so a lot of people talk of it's different in the aspect of like throughout the years it never did a battle pass it never did any seasonal things that's cool and it was cool to play a game that brings back that like you know you just bought it and you played it yeah and you which know. I miss. Yeah. <laughs> Which I was going to actually say this back on Star Wars Outlaws, but my brain just remembered right now. Mm-hmm. So Elden Ring has a big DLC coming out in June. Um, I was going to ask you, if that does great, will that remind developers that, hey, you can make money, guaranteed money, if you put out a banger of a DLC? I mean, Cyberpunk's uh, yeah. Phantom Liberty did excellent. Yeah. I think it's never been about reminding gaming I companies greed. i think it's it is purely greed do you it's, think they take a, a risk though like on it every time they're like this could fuck the whole game up yeah i definitely think they do they take the risk because they know that they could squeeze more money now and they could do a hell divers situation and, too where it just blows you know, up and, and if it gets ever bad bad i mean the guy from like tarkov nikita the ceo goes on there and he's like oh i'm sorry you feel that way and then it just feels like they just take the blows and they just let it go because people are already too invested well in some things and then i feel like in others it's like every studio is trying to find their live service game Mm -hmm. everyone sees what fortnite does which i still play fortnite it still hooks me back in they update it they change stuff out you don't have to buy anything if you don't want to no like, and, that, and that's what I loved about their models. I never feel like I have to buy stuff. I do because mm-hmm. I want to. And I, again, I'm invested into the game. And I think I did the math on it once. Like if you were just a new Fortnite player, I think if you did three full seasons without buying the battle pass, you could buy the next battle pass and you could use the, the, the money cool, from yeah. it to keep buying the That's exactly how it is. So, the and that's what I love about it. Jumping into that, like if I buy one battle pass, and I beat it, that pays for the next one. Mm-hmm. Call of Duty is the same model. Call of Duty just... I'm is it just, really? Yeah, basically, yeah. I got it... Um, I've had enough for like a while to just buy the next one because I finished the, whatever, like four seasons ago. Yeah. And I've just had enough. And I've just never done it or mm-hmm. bought a skin. Their skins are too expensive on there. They are. They're the, like $20, $30. Yeah, I mean, sometimes Fortnite is too. Like the Ninja Turtles like okay, yeah. were like 
basically but at least $25. most of them are like typically 10 bucks yeah so but oh well man should we jump into hell divers now yeah okay so i am not a pc player and on the way over here to the podcast studio we were talking about this mm-hmm. i i personally don't think it's that big of a deal and you're a pc player you you but you also have a playstation yeah. to play devil's advocate the whole issue is playstation originally wanted anyone who owned hell divers on steam to make a playstation account to play mm-hmm. or it was gonna come out yeah i don't think it's that big of a deal it's playstation wanting the more accounts to show on their reports and, and that's fine they say it's for security and maybe it is definitely for more security if you have more security there and steam yeah. cool whatever every company gets hacked um i i just i don't i don't get it like i've it, made so many damn accounts on everything <laughs> yeah i mean uh, being a gamer at this point i feel like at some point if you want to play whatever is mainstream you are going to be making several yep. different accounts whether it's origin or you yeah. be play or um what's the other one even bethesda had their own separate launcher i do remember that, epic yeah. games has their own launcher and making your own account and they still sell their products on Steam. And when you buy them on Steam, you still have to log in. So if I buy like the Division 2 yep. on Steam, you I have still to have to download yeah. Ubisoft and still log in and make an account. And um, a lot of PC players, I feel like since, depending on who you are, if you aren't into those kind of yeah. games, I definitely see the issue with making like a PSN account, especially from like Sony as a company, which has had notorious hacks and personal information being leaked. That's just like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty much asking to sign away your identity, Mm -hmm. which at some point devil's advocate though, I I do want to, I'm not defending Sony fully, but yeah, I guarantee steam's had leaks. We're just, I haven't, I didn't look it up. If you keep talking, I'll look it up though to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll keep. Go- I'll go ahead and keep talking about it while you look it up because I definitely think it's interesting. Um, but if you're a PC player, the the big issue about PSN is that on Steam, Hell Divers was advertised to everyone without it, right? But if you were in a country that did not support PlayStation Network, it ended up you just couldn't play any PlayStation games. And so Steam, to try to cover themselves up, they pulled the game in every country yeah. that you couldn't make a PSN in. Which I think that that's the one thing Sony should have just stressed. Like, if you're in those countries, we're not going to make you make an account. I think that was the dumb thing from them. Yeah. To leave into this, though, to do the research, 77,000 Steam accounts were hacked uh, 11 months ago. Oh. So they did have a breach. It wasn't their first breach, but they have had a breach. And then uh, mm. Microsoft has also had a breach, too. So devil's advocate every company gets hacked yeah i think everyone does try to remember playstation getting hacked the worst on the ps3 which Mm. that was the worst one that they've ever had definitely been fixed it hasn't happened again but to wrap around to the original point was that if you were in these countries i and it wasn't just like oh you know little little place over here across the world yeah. couldn't play hell divers anymore it was 170 countries which is a lot <laughs> it's a big chunk of yeah. the world and um do you think they'll try and bring it back like the account thing the account thing yeah maybe but i hardly doubt it because now they're marketing the game again in those countries yeah without the requirement to make a playstation mm-hmm. account if anything, what they might do is that it might just kick Sony in the butt to be like, all right, why are these countries not able to have access to us, right? Yeah. And provide better, a better consumer um, mm-hmm. marketplace. Well, yeah, marketplace for those people. So, yeah. No, I, I agree. Uh, I just, you had to play devil's advocate of the same no. thing. So, with that, though, all these controversies all stem from one thing microtransactions and greed. And like you said earlier, AAA gaming has gotten more expensive. So we do have to look at that. Like this is them trying to recoup their cost. You don't know how a game's going to do single player. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which I just spoke about, is one of the lowest selling Final Fantasy games of all time. Where the original game, the remake, was one of the highest selling Final Fantasy games of all time. 
so it's it, the big question kind of goes to this is it's like studios have these ideas and I always believe that if you make a great game eight out of ten times people are gonna buy it because they're yeah. craving that next thing especially that craving that next conversation hell divers 2 succeeded not because it's a live service game because it's a great game yeah and it's a fun game yeah if Anyone who's played it, you could see, like, even though it is considered a live service game, they do their models so differently. So well. You don't have to buy anything if yeah. you don't want. And it was like, you play a game, right? And you could find the premium currency that cost money. You could find it in your match. And, mm -hmm. like, for me, I managed to play enough Helldivers to farm up enough to continuously get whatever the the next war bond is, yeah. the battle pass. Right? Which, which is cool like it's cool for me uh mm. i love that they do that but like you look at a suicide squad killed the justice league i thought the combat was fun but it was repetitive yeah and that and that's the biggest thing that if if they would have just gone and made a four-player co-op sing or co-op story game and that's what they focused in on i think the game probably would have done better oh yeah if you would have had Definitely. like a new version of like army of two but instead it's army of four of mm. the four justice league members or four Suicide Squad members, excuse me, be pretty damn soon. Yeah, I think a lot of these companies mix up live service as an opportunity to finish the game or to drip the content into the game later on, mm -hmm. you know, not to deliver a full product. And that's another release. thing. Helldivers was cheaper. It was the same thing of, you know, it felt like a full game. Like yeah. if, if they didn't, and they continue to support too. And they don't mm. need to. Like, there's enough content in there to just keep playing, having fun. But they add new things like every month. Yeah. So it, it adds to that. And for what I want to say is that, like, this has all affected gaming in so many different ways that I feel like a lot of we're in an era where I look at like the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series X, and there's just like no games. Mm. There's no games. Whether these games are getting canceled, whether they're just taking longer to make, or whether these studios are now seeing, oh, fuck, they don't want live service. We got to change some of this stuff because like Suicide Squad was just the bare bad news. They started making yeah. that game like eight years ago when live service was finally up and coming. And if that game maybe would have came out like four years ago, probably would have done a lot better. Mm -hmm. But it's coming out in an era where everyone's like very against this shit now. Yeah. So the one thing I really want to. Oh, man, that fell. That's why. I gotta oh, fix no. that. Little boo fell for Little our boo. audio. Our audio listeners only. Um, the one thing I, I definitely want to see from gaming is them kind of go to look at what from software just did with Elden Ring. They made just a fucking good game mm -hmm. and that's all that mattered. And I'm hoping I'm not planning on playing the DLC cause I, I can't put my life too much into it. Yes. <laughs> another thing. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I could be a hypocrite, but I hope it sells good. I hope it does amazing. And I hope it brings people back into that world and it shows gaming companies that we don't need it but playstation 5 xbox series x there's like no no man exclusives it's, and it's then a bummer. you look at the last console so cycle too not that many i mean there's a the lot the biggest thing for xbox was starfield and look how that panned out yeah it, did, you, <laughs> did you hear what it's, uh i haven't talked to you about this but next month when we do this mm -hmm. we might do a couple of shows because the game showcase so we oh, might actually have to do yes. something. But June 6th or 9th, Xbox announced that they're going to have their thing. Mm -hmm. And the guy who voices JD Phoenix said, I'll see you guys there. And then it leaked that Gears of War 6 will be premiering there. Oh. And I'm going to say right now, I think Gears of War 6 premieres this year, comes out this year. No, 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 wait. Gears of War 6 comes out next year. But we're going to get... Quarter one. No. I think end. I think they're going to give them their time. But I think we're getting the collection this year. I think they're doing one, two, and three on Unreal Engine six. Is that? Oh, better? really? Is that the new Unreal or is it Unreal it Engine runs, five? Yeah, it's Unreal five. Five. I think the whole new trilogy. I think that original trilogy will be on Unreal Engine five. That would be dope. I be I good. will literally like fucking scream. I love gear so much. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, we'll have to definitely do coverage for that. Um, so you'll probably get a couple more episodes from us next month on that. Yeah. But to ask you this, like. You know, you look back towards what I think is the peak of gaming, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 cycle, not just for gaming communities and talking, but for the amount of games we are getting. It always felt like there was something great coming out or something fun and different. Mm -hmm. Do you hope that one day we can come back to that? I Do definitely you think, think we so. can. I definitely think so. Um, 
I think video games sooner or later it's gonna have like a pop or something's gotta like swing in the direction for the consumer because I don't think it's sustainable. I mean, obviously, like you look at Call of Duty, I think it made a billion dollars. It's the most am- like amassed. besides Grand Theft Auto, it's the most profitable game. Yeah, thing and it's just like. You sit there and you're like, man, a billion dollars, you would never think a video game can make that much. And yet they're still out here. Like that was the copy sold. And then they have the microtransactions, the, the microtransactions, the $20, Nicki Minaj, the, you have all these things and you think like, man, like you would think with all that money, they would have better content for the game or mm-hmm. things that would benefit more players throughout yeah. the game. And they just don't. Exactly. And I feel like it's it's going to come to a point where it's going to collapse. I, that's how I feel. I think we're about to see that personally. I, I think that collapse is coming. I think people are getting a little tired of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know for sure I am. Like, I just, I don't feel like I have the time to yeah. play all these games and do all these season passes. And I understand that's why they do them is to try and bring you back. Yeah. to playing it but like i don't need it like i still play diablo 4 i bought in one pass because it came free with the edition i bought yep i've never bought anything else for that game and i still play the game i don't need it there's enough content in diablo 4 and i know they add stuff every season so like there's uh-huh. still and it's free there's enough for me to go back and play it yeah that's what i need if you want to support games like that, then do it that way. And then maybe I'll pay for it. But just make a good fucking game first. Exactly. That's, that's what we need. And I think that's like a big call to action, I mm-hmm. feel like, for a lot of these viewers out there who definitely don't want to miss out on the next game. But you also got to think like the owner of Ubisoft doesn't think we should own the games that yeah. he makes for us, right? And so we obviously have to speak with our wallets on these. Yeah. And that's that's where we're going to hit hear the most from um so i'm interested uh that's why like i've definitely like slided more towards playstation the last two console cycles because yes there's nothing on xbox dude no (laughs) for the most part there isn't and i i've bought an xbox both gaming cycles and i literally feel like i'm abused because i liked starfield a lot there's it's just not the top tier game that you wanted it to be no it's playing fallout for the past 10 years which it's cool because i like fallout yeah but guess what i beat the game i played the game maybe 40 hours and even though i beat it i got Baldur's gate like instantly afterwards Mm -hmm. never touched starfield again yeah as much as i wanted to go back and play it i just like don't and i know they're updating it this year with like a lot of shit Mm -hmm. maybe that makes me jump back into it i got a starfield on game pass and i think i put like three hours into it and the first two I immediately felt like I've been, I've already played this. Yeah. Because it's in the same engine, it's the same kind of game. I could deal, I could still do the same silly stuff from New Vegas. Yeah. Into Starfield. Yeah. And it just it never grows. And no, uh, I agree. That yeah. was supposed to be their, their big like. Ooh, we're here. Yeah, we're here. This is it. This is our. God it would have been better contender. if Microsoft was like, "Nah, let's put the next Doom out," because that yeah. would have been like, oh, "Okay, maybe." But like, that's my thing is that Microsoft does have a lot of games in development. They've had a Fable game in development for like six, seven years. They have so many IPs. They spend so much money mm-hmm. on just like buying I'm, these companies. I'm, just, I'm waiting for them to be like, "Look at all!" Like they have Hellblade coming out. You know, we're talking about it. That's coming out this month. But they haven't marketed it at all. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't even know it was coming out. I've never played the first one. Hellblade, that's the one with the girl, right? Yeah, yeah. They yeah, have yeah. a sequel coming out this month. Which looks I thought the sequel, is it the third one? It's the second one. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. So, it's, I don't know. I'm, but yeah, going to PlayStation, a big thing is they just, they make single player games. That's what yeah. I have time for. Microsoft, it you make some, you mm-hmm. also just don't make enough games. But yeah. in general, what I want to see from developers is I want them to take Find your approach, whether it's making the best game possible. Like that's all I want in the end of the day. If it's a live service game, if it has multi, if it has microtransactions, if it, whatever, if it has those, fine. That's the market we live in now. Mm. But make a good game. Yeah, Xbox is in a dire need of their kind of hell divers. 
in my opinion. Maybe Gear 6 is that. But <sighs> look what they just did. They just put, what, fucking Sea of Thieves on the PlayStation? They just put, like, three other games. I think Starfield's coming to PlayStation, too. It's rumored. It's rumored. I think, I think the... I don't know if you saw the that's another controversy. Yeah. <laughs> was that whole rumor that whole week before they said, no, no, it's just these games coming. Mm -hmm. I will tell you right now, though, Halo Infinite's multiplayer, I think, will go to Sony on a PlayStation. I think it'll be on a PlayStation by next year. No, there is one game. it's free uh, to play. Yeah, that is true. There is one game I am excited for this year uh, that is coming by Xbox. Oh. Stalker 2. Oh, that's going to be the big one. I was going to say a different one. I have another one that I'm excited for from them. Indiana really? Jones. Oh, it looks awesome. Yeah. It's from the guys who made Wolfenstein. <laughs> Count okay. me in. I'm okay. so excited for that. I'll take so, that. I mean, they, they do have hopefully good games coming out. Mm -hmm. Like, but again, this is them buying from studios. I want to see their in-house stuff. Where's Fable? Where's Gears? Where's the next Halo? Where's Perfect Dark? Where's Prey? Oh. Where's all of these games that you have and could make? Mm -hmm. You just don't. So our call to action, make good fucking games, please. Make good games. And if you guys want to see good games, be careful with your wallet. Yeah. You know? Like when you think about those battle passes and like, of course, one battle pass doesn't hurt, but it still makes some money at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. Well, you and know what, though? You know, a game died on microtransactions, in my opinion. Multiverses. Oh, that yeah. game was awesome and when i downloaded it i got my free character started playing it oh i want iron giant oh i have to play like five hours to unlock him or i can just buy him for like three well that's disappointing mm -hmm. I, I i will say i was very disappointed by like all that stuff so i don't know man is there anything else to lay out to the controversies or is that the end of episode two i think that is the end of episode two just be safe out there and think keep, about what you spend. Yeah, and keep playing video games, guys. Make sure to leave your thoughts uh, down below if you're watching us on YouTube, if you're listening to us on Spotify or iTunes or anywhere else that you're finding this. Well, thank you so much. Make sure to follow and rate us. We are still doing a giveaway for a $75 gift card to a movie theater of your choice. That's so make right. sure to screenshot those and email me at ZachPopeReviews at gmail.com to let me see that. You'll be put into the running. We'll be pulling that in June. And then other than that, let if you have any viewer questions as well, you can email me over there and we can talk about it. Just do the subject line, Hot Mic Gaming. But other than that, my name is Zach. And my name is Phil. Let's play us out.